when I moved out here, I, I left uh, a career in commercial art and I was able to concentrate on painting and work every day on painting and nothing else. I've been here 12 years now. I came from Ontario where the previous 12, 12, 15 years I'd been painting white water and granite. I've been painting on Galliano ever since I arrived, and that was in uh, 1983. But coming to Galliano, uh, the, the, uh, uh, from the north, uh, from uh, Fort St. John area, uh, where it was um, a bit of brilliant yellow color in the fall and bare during the winter, uh, snows and things, um, the greenery here uh, was a bit challenging. I found uh, so much green that uh, I had to come to terms with. When I first moved to Galliano, I had been painting in Alberta for the most part and out in the landscape uh, a good part of the time, although I also painted in the urban, urban setting as well. But I immediately noticed a very different light here. So yeah, I came here in 1978 and uh, began painting and organized, uh, met a group of local artists, a couple of whom I knew before, but uh, right away we organized a group show at the community hall. The response was terrific and I realized right away that I was in a community that would be uh, sympathetic and, uh, and stimulating. It was during that time that the, the Dandelion Gallery was formed with uh, 13 up to maybe 19 um, local artists, and it was a great experience. It, it operated for about 13 years. And when the Dandelion Gallery uh, closed down, uh, there really wasn't a place at that point to exhibit on the island. Brian and Louise had just, just finished their house, and of course it had been designed to, to uh, show off Brian's work. I had a huge space to fill, so when the house was completed, uh, we planned this, this three artist show. We happened to be three artists, so I mean that, rather than, than play around with titles, the three artists just kind of kicked in and it stayed with us. And it keeps, I think, the three of us certainly on our toes. And it keeps me on my toes trying to find an image for the next year for the poster because I'm running out of ideas. <laughs> Usually we almost, we almost sell out. It's, uh, it's just been a phenomenon. When I came out here and discovered a different sense of water and rock, uh, and where the rock just went to another place, uh, I stayed. A great community, and it's very supportive, not, not just in a financial sense, but it's very supportive in a, uh, an emotional, uh, lifestyle sense. It, uh, I've been able to live relatively quietly alone, and yet not be alone. There's also the element of, of quietness and gentleness, which I find here. Working in the bookstore a couple of days a week enables me to go out there and yada, 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 and engage with people and, and you know do all of that buzzy stuff, and then come home and I'm just quietly with the dog and my work. I look at these rocks day in, day out, day in, day out. What I find is the more I look at them, I. I see a sense of, let me go back a minute. In Ontario, my series of work was called The Bones of the Earth. And when I came out here, the bones had a lot of crap scraped away. One of the early exhibitions I had here at the Dandelion Gallery, I remember one of the uh, local individuals coming in and they had bought some of my work. And, and he said, you know, your palette's gonna change. Because at that point I was still, in a sense, in my Ontario palette, which is quite different and it cooled off considerably when I came out here. Uh, it's shifting again, I mean, it shifts all the time, and I look back on pieces, say, a year ago, two years ago, I can see the, the sh sort of the gentle shifts in my, in my color selection, my palette, and so on, because it's always evolving, it's always changing. Uh, but definitely the, the, the colors that come out of the stone are phenomenal. You know, it just, uh, there's so much visual activity in these rocks. 
and balanced with the water and the tidal movements and, and the fact that you're reflecting light from a lot of surfaces when you have water, it just changes everything. I now, over the last number of years, have seen more of the, uh, the archetypal images that emerge. The more I lived in Galliana, the longer I lived in Galliana, the more my work shifted to actually working directly from nature, directly from life, and painting right out there in the sun. I think that I learned painting here an awful lot about working in, in muted shades, which, which occur anywhere, but on the coast they're much more typical. So the work that I did here in, in actually perfecting the rendition of, of the kind of muted tones in uh, and what I would call a sort of a gray scale, but gray with color in it. The, the growth, the floral growth here on the west coast is really something, I've never seen anything like it. On well, Galliano and on the coast, and particularly on Galliano, the spring goes from January to, to June, and uh, every week it seems a new blossom is opening. So it was this whole a glorious season that I really wasn't used to. My wife, Debbie, who's a talented gardener, started to grow gardens with with paintings in mind. She grows them and I paint them. I spend a lot of time mixing colors. I love putting colors out of the tube onto the palette and, and mixing and matching and testing and looking at this and holding a palette knife full of paint up to a, a leaf in sun or in shade. So I remember when I first uh, got my first set of oil paints at 15 and uh, I knew what I wanted to paint. I always loved landscape, and uh, and I had all the materials there. And I squeezed. Uh, I was thinking of blue sky then, and I squeezed out blue, uh, say Prussian blue and uh, and ultramarine blue, and so on. And none of them looked like the sky at all. And I was uh, at that point. I was really stymied. And the same thing with green. And I've I've kind of joked that uh, to find the right green, you have to put in a lot of red. Reds particularly interest me. Uh, I don't know, one of my mentors, of course, was my mother who said, put red in your pictures, lots of red. And uh, kind of like red. Uh, so uh, I did that and I'd look at um, brown leaves in a, at a sunrise or a sunset or something. Uh, and uh, I, w I know they were brown leaves, but I, when I saw them as red or wanted them as red, I just made them red or redder. I don't just paint Galliano. Uh, I, I have a lot of memories of, of trips I've taken uh, in the north, in the mountains, uh, back east to Ontario, where the reds were really nice and uh, other colors, and I love painting that. Galliano has been uh, just excellent in, in many ways. Um, I, I guess uh, the time, the, the, the freedom, the uh, community support and uh, involvement. I see myself as um, over, over there in Vancouver, still pounding pavement trying to get a show in a gallery, maybe four or five years ahead and uh, plenty of competition. At this three artist show, it's always a bit of a rush for me being a procrastinator of the first order. Uh, I've had um, up to uh, 19 paintings in the show and as few as maybe a dozen. Um, intense work for the last month or two before the show, but I get them done and uh, there they are. We uh, decided that what we'd try and do is a very nice opening night. And this turned out to be a very good idea. People showed up on opening night en masse. People dressed up for it. Uh, we had a nice uh, array of food. It's become an event. It's not just a, an exhibition. It's become a wonderful community social event. Uh, people get together, perhaps that's the only time they may see each other all years. We found quite to our surprise that we had to actually keep the door locked until uh, 7.30, which is the opening time of the exhibition because people right away wanted to, to buy work and in some cases take it off the walls. After talking to other gallery owners who said, that, that's what you want, that's what a good opening is. And there isn't the politics of a lot of galleries. Uh, with Keith and Larry, uh, it's, been, uh, it's been wonderful. There are moments in a painter's life, uh, inevitably, where, 
where you, you wonder if you shouldn't be doing something else rather than pursuing this chimera of a thing, you know, called fine art. But uh, an exhibition will, will, will answer the questions for you and it'll keep you at it.